Nigerians are expected to seek out the best Two words to describe the activity. The European Forum is coming. to you on Be the, the first to know. Call TV news. From the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. Presidential We ambition. break the news. Women in Nigeria. Now you can catch all the actions live. I wish you would. As the news breaks. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV Primetime News. Our 24 hour news station. Thanks for joining us again on Cool Digest West Day this morning. Now, the la national leadership of the People's Democratic Party has come out uh, quite bold and tough to say that Dr. Goodluck Jonathan will be contesting against a semi uh, leech rate candidate come 2015 presidential election. According to its national secretary, it says, and I quote him now, that. Um, the next election is going to be between darkness and light. It's going to be between a cosmopolitan, highly focused PhD holder and a semi-literate jackboot. Uh, that's Dr. Wale Oladipo, the PDP National Secretary. And um, it goes on and on to say that um, make certain other statements and he's also of the opinion that they have passed through the motion and uh, endorsed mr president as their candidate this season and it's going to be a walkover for the big party you can join us on the show today of course the phone lines will be on your screen in a moment from now but you can also join us at every juncture of the program drop in your comments your questions and your contributions uh, all you need to do is follow us at uh, on twitter it's at Code digest live and um, you can also reach us via that medium. I'm joined this morning by a legal practitioner and public affairs analyst, uh, Barrister Chukwemeka Eze. Good morning. Good morning, Nigerians. And thank you for joining us today. I'm grateful. And we also say compliments of the season to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's fine, that's fine. It's all right. There's been a lot of talk as we get um, not heating up the polity and carrying on with what they now describe as issue-based campaign. Uh, what are your first reactions, so to speak, to this particular quote from the PDP National Secretary? I'm not surprised by what the National Secretary has said. I would have been surprised if the parties are not heating up the polity because uh, we are not known for issue-based campaigns, even from the First Republic. If the only thing that whetted the First Republic was the isms mm. that some of the politicians were using. Okay. Like uh, Keon Badiwe was known to be using some isms and was known as a man of timber and caliber. I'm aware that uh, Zeke was using some vocabularies too. And uh, someone in this part of the world mm. used the Benkele Messi for <laughs> peculiar mess. And this was amusing people. This were, this words were amusing people. Mm. What is missing now is that we don't have those that amuse us. Okay. We only have people that threaten the, those on the other side of the divide. Mm. So we need those that can amuse us. But basically, uh, it's getting worse. The time that politicians used uh, programs to woo the people is getting worse. We have come to a point that, as I speak to you now, I don't know what the two parties have promised the people. I'm not saying that I have not read about job creation, uh, security, we will fight Boko Haram to a standstill, mm. we will create jobs, we will do this. I mean, these are in generic terms. I'm talking on specific terms. I will construct a Fort Mainland Bridge in Lagos. I want to hear something like that. Or I will, you will have electric trains during my tenure. Mm. Or there will be one industrialized state capital in each zone of the federation, mm. so that we can now look up, look up for industrial estates. As we speak now, I don't know their position on taxation. Mm. 
whether a particular presidential candidate will increase taxes or reduce them. I don't know. And the citizens are helping them. If you, if you check the Twitter handles, if you check Facebook, what you see, uh, uh, we will kill all the Christians, we will kill all the Muslims. You see people talking about religion or saying it's time for minority or uh, Asa Fulani must go, not must vote in one accord, mm -hmm. whether PDP, APC, everybody will vote if you are not an So you can see the parties are not interested in programs. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's difficult to hold them onto anything. And that's at the end of the election, whichever party that wins, it is then they will begin to churn out some strange programs. And some people will begin to cry. Say, ah, we didn't know that you had this in mind. Mm. But you can see they are not speaking out in specific terms. Mm. It is left for, this, for the citizens to insist that candidates should speak to them in specific terms because these are the things that will rewrite the history of our lives, that, uh, the history of our children, mm. the history of our generation and coming generations. So as it is now, I'm disappointed, but expected. I expected all these shenanigans, all these abuses. I, I expected them, and I'm not surprised Although I'm disappointed. In a swift reaction by the All Progressives Congress, of course, to read out the educational background of the uh, former head of state. Uh, uh, but then, uh, let's also look at the qualification, the educational qualification uh, to be certified being elected as the president of Nigeria. According to this document, it says that um, most has been he has been educated up to at least the school certificate level or its equivalent. Do you see anything necessarily wrong with that? I think the, the parties are not in touch with the masses. The masses are looking for the governments that will provide infrastructure, that will make their lives move forward, that will take care of the employment of all these graduates coming out of schools. Where that you are a professor, a non-professor. Nigerians are not interested, to be very frank. So, semi-illiterate, in fact, the line of argument shows that they are in one Olympian height. They are not close to the masses because the masses want to hear some, a different message, mm -hmm. not whether somebody is semi-illiterate, somebody is a professor, somebody has 30 degrees, it is totally irrelevant. One, bombings are going on in many parts of the country. They have to address it in specific terms. Nigerians cannot sleep with two eyes closed. The roads are bad. And there's so much propaganda in the system such that you find it difficult to appreciate these people that are both Christians and Muslims. They can't tell the truth. They rule us with propaganda. So I think the issue is not the level of education now. Okay. The issue is tell us what you do for Nigerians and let us vote for you. So I think on both sides of the divide, they are not doing justice to the subject matter. Nigerians want political parties that will put their ears to the ground, okay. hear the cries of Nigerians, mm and begin to address issues in that direction. Let's quickly find out what the opposition is actually saying about this, because um, already the director of the publicity of the Buhari uh, 2015 support group had expressed shock about this comment, which he said showed the depth of PDP's understanding of his principle. We're just going to take this call before we go to that particular sound. Good morning, Umar. Omar, if you're there, just go ahead with a contribution. Nigeria and myself in particular are will be disgusted and disappointed with this statement. Being a professor or being a PhD holder does not qualify me to govern well. Besides, somebody with the position of a general, 
I believe um, calling that kind of person utterly illiterate or anything to that matter portrays the kind of professors some people call themselves. It is indeed flabbergasting. And uh, I want all such people, especially a professor, that I, somebody that has risen to the position of a professor, to start making such an such a reckless and unpardonable statement. We should please retract and apologize to Nigerians for altering that kind of statement. I rest my case. It's all right. Thank you, Omar, for calling all the way from Mina. Our correspondent spoke earlier with the APC chairman in Lagos and a political analyst on this uh, issue as regards the statement. Let's just hear them out and we'll be back on the discussion. You can't say in the name of politics and insult a man who has contributed so much to Nigeria development. He was the head of state, he was a minister, and he's above, above board. This is, this is a man who is above, uh, you cannot spoil him, you can, he's, up, he's above board. And for that, you cannot insult him. Even without his age, his personality is there as the former head of state. And you call him Jack Boot. He's a man who has sacrificed his life for, for this country in so many ways. I believe uh, he's, not, he's not trained well, he's not cultured. Therefore, he, can, uh, he belongs to the zoo. I think uh, considering the economic situation of Nigeria today, considering the general security situation in Nigeria today, what Nigeria is after fundamentally to lead this country is somebody that has the creativity, right, innovation and the firepower to lead. That simply means credentials are one thing, but ability of somebody to convert credentials, whether academic, military, social, or entrepreneurial credential to lead this country forward is what Nigerians are after. We are not interested, right, in paper competence. We are interested in practical competence as Nigerians today. Okay, exactly what they have to say as regards this issue. But you were able to establish earlier in your opening remarks that um, obviously, probably educational background isn't of importance. But let's look at this particular statement that has now become a matter of public discourse that the election will be between uh, Mr. President, who is enlightened, and a military jackpot. Does it in any way contradict what is also what we've heard from the opposition also in recent times? I think the opposition is not better when it comes to com making comments. I mean, APC is not better. APC is very good in propaganda. And uh, uh, PDP is trying to match them in the propaganda war. So it seems to me that, like I said, the two parties are chasing shadows. There's in fallacy, in the study of fallacy, there's what we call argumentum ad hominem, leaving the issue and chasing the person. Let me just hold you for a minute, Barrister. We have a caller from Jaws. Good morning, Wally. Mr. Nifemi, Good God morning. will bless you. I feel that if I grew up in the north, I'm a Yoruba person, but I grew up in the north. Yoruba is not trained to be insulting either. And that, that professor, I don't know where I come from, is immaterial. But the goodwill the president is happy. These people have just destroyed the goodwill of President Jonathan. I don't know why the people that surrender the president are behaving the way they are behaving. And uh, on, on the issue of whether you are the illiterate or illiterate, it doesn't matter. Where you are illiterate, uh, you are a professor, and our people are being killed every day. Is that what we want? You are a professor, people are dead every day. Is that what we want? 
you are a professor, our oil is being taken away, is that what we want? What we want in this country, like uh, the United States, is what are the programs you have for this nation? What are the economic programs? How are you going to do the east-west road that those of us that do businesses travel up and down? How is going to be improved? These are the things we should be hearing now. If they should go on issue. They should stop name calling. After the man that comes from me now. Look at where you are. You can see, you can see some of us, our understanding differ. Some of our understanding differ. Some people, some of us did not say you are calling this death in semi-literary. If anything happens now, they will take arms, they will start fighting one another. Our leaders should learn how to talk very well. I, I don't know, the both political party has their own. But I could see now, uh, the way Alaji Lai Mohammed is talking, he does not insult direct. If you want to even talk, you should use your sense. Look at the other late pieces spokesman. If you want to talk, you will see reason, the way he's talking. It's not that you call a former head of state to jackpot. You call a former head of state. One day, President Jonathan will leave that place. And if anybody calls President, uh, uh, President Jonathan any other name as the former head of state, I will not be happy. You, don't, you know, because of politics, you don't need to open your mouth anyhow and insult people. Is peace, is let us work together and bring the best candidate. Let the ballot box speak. Whoever that won, let the other one congratulate him. And look at the mature man of AGT. That man has won my heart. That man really won my heart. And these are the way Nigeria should behave. And uh, please, the, the moderator, if anybody you bring to that program that is started to insult one political or other, don't invite that person again. We want peace in this nation. That professor is not a professor. Like uh, the other man said, he belongs to the zoo. That's why the man belongs to. He's not a professor. He's not a Yoruba man. Yoruba man, we don't deal that way. We don't disrespect Heather. We respect Heather. We may have our own shortcoming, but Yoruba respect Heather. God will need for you. Need for me. God bless you. Yeah, thank you very much, Wally, for your contribution. Earlier, you were talking about the fact that the opposition is not faring better. Yes, they even started the war the, in this regard. But uh, I just want to say that. Uh, uh, the PDP is not helping matters because the way they, they are running their tongues, the spokespeople, the other day one, one of them was talking about Jesus Christ. I mean, this is not time to begin to compare the president with Jesus Christ and say is this and that about Jesus. I mean, Say things that people will want to hear. Uh, for the length of time they stayed in Abuja, to me, it seems it's affecting their psyche. Otherwise, they should be telling people where to buy products for the season and buy it cheap. Or how the government will release food from storage facilities and make these uh, items very cheap. And I'm sure that's what the people want to hear. How people will move by train or by buses to their destinations yeah. and how government will facilitate this uh, means of transport to be very cheap so that when people are planning, they can plan along that line. But let Nigerians not get carried away. Politicians, even these politicians are busy themselves. So we soon decamp to the other side. So if you get carried away with their quarrels, you will miss the point. Don't buy over the quarrel of politicians. Nobody should vex himself with this one abusing the other one, the other one abusing the other one. The other day, Femi Fani Kayode was on the other side, abusing people on this side. Today is on this side, abusing people. On... So the thing is, it's a game. So know it as a game. Just like in football, you see some people pushing their opponents down, my a player in mind, you push somebody in Arsenal. That tomorrow is bought over to Arsenal. And they start pushing somebody in mind. Team. So if you are a fan, don't get carried away. They are doing their thing at the end of the Let's day. Let's take this call from Tukbi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good morning, and welcome to Call Digest. Hello, are you there? Yeah, hello. I am surprised for an educated man to call the general of Nigerian Hanu an illiterate. The general is equivalent to a professor in an academic setting. The general 
in general, is even more than a professor. He's a specialist. He's a well-trained individual. He both skills, intellect, character, and everything. It is it is more than his this time to call the general of Nigeria and the entire general and illiterate. This we this we this will affect the psyche of other generals that are still in service that would people regard us as illiterate despite our training, despite our commitment, and despite our service to this great nation. And in fact, it, it, it can reduce the morale of the officers and the men of Nigeria are forces. It we it we it we it, it, we, 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 we belittle them by calling a retired general I semi illiterate. It's embarrassing. And the blame should be at the doorstep of PDP. Because the, the person that spoke is not speaking for himself for his capacity. He is the national secretary of PDP. And if you look at the character anyway, because uh, I we could remember that, uh, that it was one of the people that were arrested for the murder of the Shibola Ido. But despite uh, that, if you call the General Buhari an elite, somebody that has been governor, let's even assume that he was not educated before he became governor. He was a governor of almost six states put together. He was a GOC. He was a petroleum minister. In fact, he was, he was, and he was a, an head of state. He was a PTM chairman. He would even want to land by the top. Being that he has had all those posts shows that he is no longer an elite. And in fact, you cannot even become a captain if you are not educated. Military, military education is a bit different from conventional university. And he has not been established. In Nigeria, because they have already joined the Nigeria Athletic Institute, and NDA was established in 1964. So those people uh, that are where his mates could they went for their military education abroad, and somebody that was trained abroad for several years, and after after he, after several years before he, he, he become an officer, if that person cannot be regarded as a general. And I right. think that PDP needs more education. They need more enlightenment. And you, if you look at the, the speech and the various uh, media press releases of the APC, they are not, they address issues, except if we are not reading. When you read the press release of Lai Mohammed, he will put you in public where it should be without saying, maybe, maybe Mr. President, Moron, he doesn't use all those derogatory language Thank you for your contribution. Would you call it and able to keep your uh, contributions quite concise? And you can also tweet us at Call Digest Live. And you just follow us on that Twitter and we'll also be able to take all your comments. But Barrister, have we been able to articulate in clear terms what uh, heating up the polity would mean in the area of what we say because at a time i also recall that the pdp at one time uh said that certain alterances by the river state governor can amount to treasonable acts it looks as if politicians can come out to say anything they like without any law so to speak bringing them to book i agree with you actually i was uh, giving you some tips on logic that's right that in the study of fallacies there's what we call argumentum ad hominem, mm. leaving the issues to attack the person. That's the fallacy that was committed by the National Secretary of PDP. Mm. He left the issue to attack the person. We also have another principle called petition principi, begging the question. You leave the issue, you'll be begging the question. Mm. But be that as it may, there is no offense committed in PDP in terms of hitting up the polity that APC does not commit. What, when contributors make contribution, what they do is that they keep constant any wrong done by their, the party they are supporting and highlight that of the other party. But the important thing is that 
these are Nigerian politicians. Mm. Many of them on this side today were on the other side yesterday. That's right. And they have not shaved what makes them. Now, strictly speaking, I have been an advocate for National Code of Conduct for political parties and politicians. Until we have it, mm. we will continue to have this messy situation, this peculiar mess that we are having now. That is to say, each time, in fact, Nigeria is here to have or to prepare an environment conducive for national elections. Each election goes with violence, mm. killing of people, making unguarded statements, and nobody is punished for that. So it's already part of our history. And I foresee a date that our lawmakers, or even we empower a neck to make a, a code of conduct for politicians. So that if you say things affecting security or the opponent, then you will suffer a ban of maybe one year, you won't contest any election, or two years. There must be a line, like in a football game, like in a sport. There, mu there must be rules. The way it is now is that there are no rules. And even the few rules we have, they are observed more in the breach and mm. nothing happens. But are you saying the way it is now, there is no way certain people and certain utterances can be cautioned via the rule of law? There is. In fact, time has shown it. In 2011, I've just forgotten where we are coming from. Some people say they will make the country ungovernable. Nothing happened to them. Mm. Some, in fact, I read it in the newspapers. It's not that. I'm not talking of the one they said by I read it said by many people that the country will become ungovernable and nothing happened to them. And re recently, people have been making, politicians have been making all kinds of utterances, forgetting that they have followers. They are preparing the ground for post-election violence. And it seems to me that what Bacon said is true, that the only lesson man learns from history is that man shall never learn from history. And that's why history repeats itself. So we want to repeat the lesson of election violence. Politicians are and their children are abroad. As we speak now, that's why I'm urging Nigerians not to flex their muscles. Because after eating it up, they have private jets. Uh, on the day of the election, as it's being counted, some people will be in UK, some people will be in other places. Even if they are around, they have sufficient security people to take care of them. And their children are already abroad. So Nigerians must be careful not to get sucked in okay. into this dire tribe between PDP and APC. Let's take Let this call it as game. from Akure. Hello, good morning, Larry. I, I, we, should, we should try to put the issue, the real issue. Whenever we are on TV stations, in as much we are not politicians, we are all Nigerians, and we are all suffering from misgovernance of this land. Either you are a PDP supporter or a PDP supporter, or a PDP supporter, or a PDP You are a Northerner, you are a Southerner. We are all paying for the misgovernance. Uh, the people that said, they will make Nigeria ungovernable. They will uh, PVP more than us. Then, when they were reaching the consensus, more than consensus candidate to contest against President Jonathan in 2004, it was not that General Muhammad Buhari, nor his supporter, the hostile for statement. Let's put fast. The name of the person that hostile for is uh, Chief Lawa Keita. And Chief Lawa Keita is a PDP member and is still in PDP today. Why are we lying? What do we benefit from lying in order to defeat Nigerians? Uh, Dr. Ruben Abati, the, the spokesman of the president, he wrote something on me. He took the, he took step fast, saying that it was it was General Buhari that halted the statement. And General Buhari challenged him to court. The presidency had to beg, had to apologize, and the paper 
wrote in the trash room, in the Guardian, that the day it was not General Buhari that said it, no, it was opposition. So it was a led government. And besides the topic, if I, I happen to be in civil service, my brother is also a military officer. In the paraventure, we entered the same service the same year, 2008. Do you know that my brother spent four years, and I spent six years in the conventional university anyway, due to strike and all that? Then we entered, uh, we entered civil service almost the same year. Uh, may I tell you that my brother has gone for overseas training, different military schools for more than eight years in different countries. In, in Malaysia, in USA, in Canada, I have not benefited from one week training. What does that show to you? Shows anybody in military, military officers, they are highly well trained, highly educated. So General Buhari is educated. And whenever an issue happens, let's see the claim where it lies. Don't let us generalize. If you say there's no political ideology in all the parties, we have a PDP, we have APC. APC is a new party. APC is just one and a half years. So if they did not show their ideology, and I think they published their ten point ideology, if the ideology, if they implement it or not, that is speculative. But for for us to categorize that. They lack ideology when they had already published their ideology and programs on the television. And if you listen to Rachel Amishi yesterday, when he was stating the party's program and policy, he stated that they are fighting corruption and insecurity. So if the other party are part, we should try to differentiate between the parties. And let's put links, let's put commendations where it lies, and let us right. stop generalizing and because we are all Nigerians, who will all benefit from good governance? Who will all benefit from bad governance? So thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Good to hear from you, Larry, today from our career. Now, let's just turn to the other side of the story because we have other issues to touch on today. And it has to do with the uh, fundraising of about 21 billion naira for Mr. President. We were able to speak with some uh, respondents in Abuja. Uh, many of them are critical over the manner some wealthy Nigerians and government officials raised that money, and others uh, think otherwise. Let's just um, hear from some of them. Uh, from the federal capital territory. It's like an NGO. They need money for their campaign. They call where wishes. They didn't force anybody. And they came and donated to them. So nothing spoiled. Nothing spoiled for anybody. Even if they got 100 billion, it's their own pocket. APC can probably do the same. People who always want to contribute, um, I'm sure the person who may have done that has vision. He may have concluded that maybe PDP will continue, so let him invest so that uh, he can be recognized tomorrow. So maybe the person must be a businessman. There's a work on development because even in uh, overseas, when Obama was on, on their own, he even affected the Nigerian. We say that we should must contribute anything you have to make the government fine. You remember that Obama had enough donation that at the end of its even victory, there was a surplus in the campaign fund account. So what has happened here is the right practice that is done in any democratic uh, system, where people in support of a particular political party come out their money to support the campaigns. It is a marked departure from what it used to be, that the sitting government would just dip their hands into the covers and use it to campaign. But PDP has shown clearly that even when we have the advantage of incumbency, we will still not touch public funds a amount for other projects. But rather, we will call upon our friends and supporters who God has blessed to help us fund our campaign movements. Some people come out to, you know, to donate billions of naira. And the, the way I picture it, you know, is, uh, the, the, the president is collecting money from the rich to buy votes from the poor. Now when he wins, the poor will pay back with their blood. 
because they don't have the money to pay, but they must pay back somehow, you know, and that is the problem we have in this country. So the common man should just, you know, galvanize now. They need to mobilize themselves, you know, and say no, no to this impunity, no to this nonsense going on in the country. So, Barrister, many are asking uh, even did the PDP and their presidential candidate has breached any particular law. Under the Electoral Act, how much can a presidential candidate spend on electioneering? The position is that not the Electoral Act has not exactly fixed a sum that can be spent on electioneering. I have not seen such a provision in the Electoral Act. Let me show you some other opinions. Um, some here, somewhere in the document here, they are citing section 91 subsection 9 that says that an individual or other entity shall not donate more than one million naira to any candidate. The question you asked me is how much that can be spent. Okay. You didn't ask me how much that can, can be, be donated. donated. You didn't ask me. Okay. So the, your question spent, and you cannot cite any portion of the Electoral Act that fixates a particular sum that can be spent in an election. Do you get me? And if it comes to donation, uh, most of the things politicians do are even against the law. Most of the things, many of the things, even you see the way they talk. The, the politicians rig election in this country. They mismanage public funds. All those things are they lawful. But you see, I want to take it this way that remember the time of then Dr. Ndiokere Konyuke, when he mobilized the corporate world and they donated heavily for Obasanjo's cam campaign, I think in 2003. So we have a history of people donating various sums. They can cloak it under anything. Do you understand? They can cloak it under anything. i give you an instance. When you hear friends of this person donating five billion, you don't know how many friends the person has. If you go and challenge him, he may say, he has 50,000 friends and raised fictitious names. By the time you finish the investigation of the 50,000 people, the election will be over. Let's quickly take this call from Samuel. <laughs> Samuel is calling from Lagos. Good morning, Samuel. Hello, good morning. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead with the country. Thank you. Thank you. You see, talking about the issue of this country, I think. Compromise is a major issue here. Everybody has compromised. Everybody wants to lead. Nobody wants to follow. And the, 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 the whole system is so corrupt. So many people are biased. We don't want to talk about somebody looking for who to please as to what to do. We can't run this country in this form. The whole system needs to get out overhaul. There shouldn't be any distraction. Talking about certificate of that, that's not an issue. It's, it's, it's the question of the quality mind to produce creative information forward. Nigeria has been made an entity of shame between the international community. That's why even so small countries where they call the, 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 the Nigeria system. You can't travel out and have boldness, have confidence that in Nigeria, which this is a country endowed with great resources, great facilities all over the place. The, the human beings to this country have destroyed virtually everything. I think this country needs God's intervention. Human beings will use this country to tell a set to God in Tavern. But there are next to the God will really intervene. Whoever got put there, I'm in support. All I need is that Nigerian populace should be able to have smile in their lips, smile and, be, and rejoice 
that look, we are now back to a system. Cut shoes them. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much, Samuel Colin from Lagos. You're saying that there is no limit to which contributions and spendings can be done for the No, in terms election. of spendings, in terms of spendings, not in terms of contributions. But I'm saying that some of the provision of the Electoral Act in this connection uh, can, can be shortchanged by some other provisions. And you see, what a politician is to take advantage of any loophole in a law. And you are aware this is not the first time politicians have. This electoral act you are talking about is 2010 as amended. Okay. And since then, politicians have been contributing money. Even in the various conventions they held, they had to bribe delegates. And I heard some delegates got as much as $5,000. Okay. So if you see the way it was written in the papers how some people brought money, distributing here and there. It's difficult to do a convention, delegates convention without distributing money. Where has the money come from? What has happened to the electoral act provision? So what I want to make uh, bring into focus is that politicians try to breach every law to get what they want. Ali Kadiri is calling from Abuja. Hello, good morning. Hello, are you there? We thank uh, Court TV for the very good work they are doing. Uh, and in as much as they are doing this good work, we are also begging them to be bringing certain people to the, to, the, to the studio so that they can be able to educate us, not to just talk. For example, there is a difference between brilliant people and intelligent people. When English are being spoken, words are being passed across. We expected people that are coming to help us give a good literal interpretation of those words. For example, the particular scenario or event at hand now in our political scene has to do with opposition. And opposition means conformity. APC as a party, from my own literal understanding, is formed to oppose PDP. It's not fun to contest. And uh, also, I want to also talk about governance. The literal translation of governance is to manage crisis. It's not absence of crisis. So when somebody tells somebody that I will make a country or a situation unmanageable for you, I expected such person to come up with devices to also outwit his such person's uh, craftiness or whatever major he wants to use to make it ungovernable. They, we expected our our scholars to come up and help the less educated ones to understand what governance is all about. So Jonathan should have possessed enough skills because he has already knew known his enemy who told him that the country will be ungovernable. All we have to do is to come up and display a high level of skill which is thick, fit, or make him fit to say he wants to govern us. So even if Buhari comes, there's going to be also crisis. In Gawas time, there was crisis. In Babadira's time, there was crisis. No government that has never come up to face crisis. But what makes us to see them as leader is their ability to arrest those situations. So I want you to put that issue of making country ungovernable Aside, don't use as a yastic for a failure. What we expected from a, a leader is to come and help us to manage situation. There's no way Nigeria will be a level playground. Not at all, not even in America, not even in Russia. They are managing it. So let us be educated so that we can be able to educate us and know the right thing to do. Please, I want to also come up to... Uh, be, uh, just vitally to the issue of raising of funds. The fund being raised now is from who and what is their work. These are the same people that cut away our money, mismanage our funds, stole our money. How can the governor raise 50 billion? Please, the 50 million naira. What is his salary? What is his total take home in the one four years that he has spent that he will be able to come up with 50 million? If it is not state money, please, I want us to be realistic 
and the construction so will be able to learn and be able to know how to manage ourselves. Thank you very much, especially to Paris. God bless. Well, thank you very much for your contribution. Well, we just got a tweet now from Barrister Ezekiel, and he said that Section 91, Subsection 2, of the act states that the maximum election expenses to be incurred by a candidate at the presidential election shall be one billion naira. Yes, maximum one billion. But who are these the books? Now, is it on an election campaign or on an election? Okay. Draw a difference between election campaign and the one done in Abuja is both presidential election, governorship election, national assembly election, including state assembly election. So all elections subsumed in one. At the end of the day, if you are did the books, the president will make sure that he will not spend more than one billion for election and not election campaign. And let me tell you the difference between the two. Election takes place in one day for presidency. In one day, for na that same day, the that of the National Assembly may be done. Then the other day, governorship and... Now, if an election takes place in, in one day, the president should not spend more than one billion. But campaign, can take place within three months. Okay. And election campaign, you can spend any amount. The subsection two you're talking about, it, I'm not aware it's talking about like, or everything about election, including campaigns, election. Do you know that in practical terms, election takes, even that of the governor, takes much more than that. On the day of the election, many of these parties, they are, their own uh, party supporters, they distribute, if you distribute money around the country mm. to your supporters, whether in APC or PDP, it will nearly be one billion. Let's take this call from Benway. Good morning, winning. How are you today? Good morning. Good morning. A caller came, a said in 2011, Bonari came out to say Nigeria would be ungovernable. But has she come out to do so? No. I feel that uh, critics must always come. So it is good for leadership. I know that salaries are not being paid in some states for five months. And they are now raising funds for PDP. So I feel that since they have not paid salaries up to that amount, and are raising funds for PDP presidential candidate, what do they think they are doing? Okay? Thank you. And bye. Winner, thank you very much for your contribution. I'm quite bitter about salaries not being paid. So, but you've then... gotten the message on election. Mm. I mean expenditure mm. on election. Mm. And the difference between campaign and the exact election. Let's compare the two now. Mr. President had a fundraising. It got about 21.27 billion. Aaron. No, PDP had a fundraising. The PDP fundraising for Mr. President, so to speak. No, 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 no. no. Mm. PDP clarified that it was not for Mr. President. Okay, it but was it for was all for of all the election the elections. processes. Yes. Buhari also had a fundraising and um, was Buhari able to... Buhari said to have a fundraising. He, he had a fundraising recently. No, we the 54 million naira mm, he From the support group. No, that's not the fundraising. Where he got the million naira. No. But How would you describe that? The true position is that APC will still have a fundraising. You can't conduct. It's either you do it openly or you do it secretly. I blame Nigerians. Many of these Nigerians that make these comments, they belong to political parties. And they've not paid a couple to those as dues, monthly dues, to their political parties. With the nature of boss vacuum, the money must come from somewhere. Both parties fund both Governors of both parties fund their parties from public coffers. We must be sincere to assess. 
Nigerians are not, members of parties are not contributing. Let's, let's take this call for, uh, from Lagos. Good morning, Dean. Yeah, he Hello, about, you uh, there, go ahead with the contribution. The problem in, uh, in Nigeria, we fail to tackle it. And we, we are just talking about Buhari, Buhari. When you look at the problem, uh, what is happening in Nigeria right now, the corruption is just too much. People voted for to change a lot of things. But still, it persists with this corruption that has been going on for years. So it is time for, for people to change different governments in order to move Nigeria forward. Buhari is only the person that can do that. People are talking about semi military. Buhari is the limited person. Think about that. We should stop talking about religious and semi military. Dr. Jonathan is a doctor. But what is he doing? He's doing nothing. He's doing nothing. We claim he's a, he's a doctor. He has PhD. But he's doing nothing. So what we're supposed to do is to focus on somebody who can rule, who can make Nigeria to be a great nation. We should stop comparing people, he's not in, he's illiterate, he's not illiterate, and those things. People who are educated, what we are they able to do? They're not able to do an evidence. So people should rise up. It is time for Nigeria to rise up, to change this government, because he's not doing anything for the country at all. God bless Nigeria. Thank you. Oh, thank you for your contribution. With those indeed that have personal opinions, <laughs> quite sensitive there. But here, I sent us a tweet saying, uh, We need to seek the face of God for divine leading. Many civil servants are in agony now due to non payment of salary nationwide. And I believe that Winning also made that particular observation when she called in from Benway. We're rounding up now, but let's look at how much a role money will play in the 2015 politics. Where do you see the bulk of all of this money going to? Okay, just before I make a comment on that, look at Abga. Abga made Obiano, an Umbra state government, governor, his leader recently. When Obi was there, he was made the leader of the party. Why? It's to bring public funds and fund the party. So we are playing the ostrich game. In this country, it is just people in the public sector that form parties. I mean, majorly. Majorly. Money comes from the private sector, baby. Basically, many contractors, if before you are paid for a contract, you'll be given a particular percentage to pay into the party coffers. These things are going on. And Nigerians who belong to parties are not paying. They're only criticizing. And until we fill the vacuum, it is only then we have pure party, internal party democracy, or a semblance of it. Their money. But before you go there, don't you see a major challenge here? For instance, someone in one of the clips we showed earlier talked about a possible investment into but the it 2015 is, it is. If I give five billion naira to a cause, I probably might ex be no, expecting more than I that. I agree with him. Basically, you know, the major business driving in Nigeria is politics. And that's why people are ready to blow up their heads because of it. And let me tell you, if, whether in Nigeria or outside Nigeria, it's not a lily man's game. I mean, politics. It's money. The first commandment on politics, money. Second commandment, money. Third commandment, money. Because it is money you need to buy those who will work for you. Uh, let me not use the word buy. But you will need, when you use the word logistics in politics, what is it? You have to pay for certain things. It's money. You have vehicles, you want to use your private jet, hire private jet to take uh, uh, high political wheelers to campaign grants. You need money. So money is going to play a major role. And that's why for the first time in this country, we are going to have a real presidential election because the opposition has enough governors that can bring out money to match the ruling party, Naira for Naira, money for money. Let's quickly dollar take this call dollar. from Enugu. <laughs> Good morning, Emeka. Emeka, are you there? Hello, I want to make my own contribution. Please go ahead. OK. Um, my contribution, first of all, let me thank the moderator and whoever 
initiated this program, which is good for the country. Um, I've been listening and watching what people are saying from different divides. Uh, the only truth there is like the guest there said, is that the politicians don't know what they do the country. Exactly what the guest said is my view. But I also want to say something. People are challenging the fundraising 21 billion naira as raised by the PDP for the election. Is constitutional, is acceptable in law. Uh, there's something you will notice. Anytime somebody is coming up to challenge the comment made by either PDP or uh, APC, you notice that the person is making the same mistake. Like the last caller just uh, what he did, the last caller did, I didn't share with him. He was trying to correct the mistake and he's just making the same mistake. You are saying that people are making volatile uh, comments and they're also making the same mistake. How can you say that the president is not working and you know the country of where we are? You are saying that the chapter is not working. You want to condemn somebody who is coming and not that an illiterate. And they are also saying that the, the, the president who is the doctor of the people that is not what I try to show. You are also committing the same offense. People who want to go to uh, the, the equity must go with England. You should have corrected the other person like a gentleman. And then we, we, are, we are watching, we are listening. The electorate have the last the final say to cast their vote to the, uh, the right candidate when the time comes. But I want to make one thing clear. That thing I want to make clear is that those in the opposition, they don't even know what uh, Nigerians expect from them. They leave issues to attack personalities. When we talk about this opening mark too wide, it is the opposition that is doing it all along. And uh, the country is not happy about it, including myself. Um, the best thing to be done is for them to address issues. Let them address issues like the American election. I thought we are supposed to have learned from them. Having been it for about a hundred years, we have celebrated thinking that they were supposed to have improved. So my advice is that uh, those trying to uh, attack the leadership of uh, Good Luck Jonathan must also know that we are Nigerians. We are suffering like they are suffering too. And they have to tell us the truth. If you are trying to correct and say something, you have to present a data option that we will follow. And in the same way, and they, those in PDP, I'm not a politician, those in PDP should also know that we are human beings. Contributing money for politics is good. Whether uh, it runs into billions of naira, is nobody's, uh, it doesn't concern us. But people should also know that it is wrong for a president or whoever is in authority to be found in, 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 in the country's cover to take money to do campaign. We saw it happen the other day. A minister of finance was threatened to resign in the past decision because the, the, the money suit, the money which is supposed to be the money of this country, a particular president in power. We do that money for purposes of campaign. This one is better. If you know that you have a friend who's contesting an election, it is your duty to contribute what it to, to, to such a person. Uh, the law says one billion naira. Just like the guest said, how do you know that, uh, how do you check the, 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 that one billion naira for the people uh, that the president is supposed to spend? It is not possible. So right. uh, thank you very much. I'm, thank I you share with the, 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 the people that are coming to You were saying that, that it's going to be an interesting people. election, that the yes. opposition ha now have um, has more governors also to get money from. That can fund the, the election. Buhari. But where do you see all of this money going into directly uh, as we count down to 2015? I think uh, some people will just get their own, go to Dubai and buy properties and, and begin to enjoy themselves. Because the you see money being spent in unproductive uh, enterprises, definitely the money will go down the drain. The money will go down the drain, and at the end of the election, some many, many people will be suffering. Do you see it trickling down at all to the electorate? I don't see it trickling down. I don't order. see it trickling down. Much we go into bribing people, drinking beer, buying guns, buying bullets, settling people. Uh, buying over electoral officers, buying PVC, uh, uh, permanent voters' cards, and at the end of the day, you cannot pinpoint where you, I mean. So, 
I don't see it having a favorable effect on the economy. Well, wrapping up now, what exactly would you say is that pivotal role for the electorate as we count down to the 2015 election? What is it that they must do right this time around? By voting according to their conscience. But as I can see from the contributions that we have even missed it because you can see hardly had anybody or many people are not interested in facilities in the economy mm. whether the economy will be better whether the interest rate will come down you can if you listen to arguments you see people they are much more interested in discussing issues that are sentimental so Moving from double-digit interest rate to single-digit interest rate is not an issue before many of these contributors. They don't care. So if the business runs on double-digit, provided it's a name they want, okay. they will prefer it. So it's high time we deal with issues that we change our generation from. All right, finally, let's take this call from Abuja. Good morning, Abdulaziz. You have one minute. Please go ahead with a contribution. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Please go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, Abdul. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Please, uh, I want you people to know. Are you there? I'm afraid we lost that. I wish we could take your call. But that wraps us on the show today. Thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to Barrister Chukwemeka Eze. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you also find time to join us subsequently. I'm grateful. On thank the you. show. Abdulaziz, all you need to do is just follow us on Twitter. It's at Core Digest Live. And you can drop your comment there. We'll be glad to hear from you. And of course, we'll also take it here live on television. Core Digest continues tomorrow on Christmas Day. Enjoy yourself. Don't go away. Glad to have you join us on another edition of the political arena, the most detailed and incisive political show. You will see all sorts of politicians. Even those who cannot manage their homes, we tell you to let them manage their lives. Look well. Try your eyes. So stomach infrastructure is a way of life. Even if I cannot do anything, and I continue to help your stomach so that your life will keep on going. So my style is without apology. Stomach infrastructure is a way of life for me. I should ask you, what is going right in this country? Is it education? It is security, infrastructure, is it healthcare? What is going right? Absolutely nothing. We mean to win Lagos. PDP is going to win Lagos in 2015. And that means that everybody must be on board. INEC has colluded with the presidency, the opposing party to rig this election from the data to the end. The successful conduct of free, fair, and peaceful elections in Ekiti is a good omen for the subsequent elections to come, and the 2015 general elections must be the best. The good, bad, ugly, and beautiful sides of the Nigerian political system. Join me every Sunday at 9.15 p.m. on Core TV News.